I'm going to uh, announce now that we are going to be reading the list of names of transgender people that we know have been victims during the past year. Uh, the entire list from 1970 up until this year is on this poster board for anyone who is interested in reading it. There are familiar names among those. And uh, the, name, the list just gets longer and longer. The, uh, this is not an event right now for the faint of heart. There's going to be a description of these beautiful people and why and how their lives came to an end. So if you have a card, please come forward. If you're on this side, go over here through that door. Go over there through that door. I am Renee Rosaria Hidalgo from Miami Beach, Florida. On March 15, 2012, a friend called the police when I had been missing for a few days. When officers went to my apartment, they found that I had been gagged, stabbed, and slashed in my home. I'm Anil Ira Mathengu, a 39-year-old from Thankasari, India, I was a queer rights activist before May 10th, 2012, when I was found dead, having my throat slit and my stomach stabbed. I'm Kendall Hampton from Cincinnati, Ohio. On August 29th, 2012, I was threatened by death earlier in the day and reported it to the police. That night, on the way to the market, I was shot and killed. I was 26 years old and had an eight-year-old daughter. I am Leandro Eduardo Campos Ferrero. On April 26, 2012, in Recife, Pernambuco, Brazil, I was playing dominoes at a bar with some friends when two men came in and shot me 11 times. One of my friends was wounded in the attack. I was 25 years old. My name is Kyra Cordova, a 27 years old former volunteer and employee of the Gay and Lesbian Latino AIDS Education Initiative. On September 3rd, 2012, in Philadelphia, my lifeless body was found on Labor Day with a gunshot wound to the head. My name is January Marie Lopez, from New Win Winchester, British Columbia, Canada where I became social coordinator for Share Vancouver in 2009. On September 29, 2012, at 26 years old, I was stabbed and later died in the hospital. I am Brenting Dalio from New Orleans, Louisiana. I am a trans-identified 22-year-old. On November 26, 2011, I was found beaten to death with severe head trauma. I am Brandy Martell from Oakland, California. I am a 37-year-old outreach, work, outreach worker at the Tri-City Health Center in Fremont, which serves the transgender and transsexual community. On April 29, 2012, I was shot and killed by a man after he found out I was transgender. My name is Paige Clay. I am a 23-year-old from Chicago, Illinois. On April 16, 2012, I was found dead in an alley behind my home with a gunshot wound to my forehead. I am Geith Goins, a 23-year-old transgender woman. 
on December 29, 2011 in New Orleans, Louisiana. I was found strangled to death, my body dumped in a scrap yard in eastern New Orleans. My name is Chrissy Asopardi and I am from Finsbury Park, London, United Kingdom. On June 4th, 2012, my 22-year-old body was found and pronounced dead at the scene. The cause of my death is still unknown. My name is Sonia Massey. I had just emerged as the face of the transgender community in Gujarat, India. On November 24th, 2011, I was shot near Rupali, near Rupali Cinema by unidentified assailants, collapsed and succumbed on the spot. I'm Victoria and I am 21 years old from Sao Paulo, Brazil. On September 16th, 2012, I was beheaded, had my genitals and an ear removed, and then thrown in a dumpster. The killer took my purse, plus the piece of ear, as a trophy. I am an unknown 24-year-old trans woman from San Sao Jose do Rio Preto, Sao Paulo, Brazil. On August 15th, 2012, I was shot and killed by a motorcyclist who had just killed another trans woman. The man then walked to another location and shot and injured two more trans women. I am Rebecca from Alagoas, Brazil. On April 22nd, 2012, I was found dead with gunshot wounds to the back of my head. I am an unknown trans woman from Clementa, Brazil. On August 29th, 2012, I was found dead with repeated blows to the head from a spade. This is the sixth documented attack on a trans woman over the last few weeks near the same area. The man who committed the crime was a former police officer. I am Hermaine Augusto de Souza, a 16-year-old from Samé, São Paulo, Brazil. On January 23rd, 2012, I was found dead on a road near the Garden Forest, having been shot 13 times by a firearm. I am Soraya, a 39-year-old from Olivenza, Alagoas, Brazil. On March 13th, 2012, I was gauged, had pieces of wood inserted into my anus, and had my genitals burned with alcohol. Too scared to tell my family what happened, I went to the hospital feeling ill and died in surgery. My name is Popina. I am a 25-year-old from Rio de Janeiro State, Brazil. On January 1, 2012, I was found in my home by family, already dead with four gunshots to my chest and two teeth missing. I'm Tyrell Jackson from Rivera Beach, Florida. I am 23 years old, and on April 4th, 2012, I was shot and killed in a robbery. Investigators believe the gunman targeted transsexual sex workers due to a string of other similar robberies that happened in the area. I'm Manak Shimal, a 42-year-old trans woman from Krishnagiri, India. On April 12th, 2012, I was found after neighbors noticed I had been missing for four days with my throat slit and my body burned. I am an unknown trans woman from Pinaeus, Parana, Brazil. On June 27, 2012, my charred body was found on the banks of a river burned beyond recognition. I am an unknown trans woman from San Paulo, Brazil. On September 21st, 2012, I was found with neck injuries, hands and feet tied, wrapped in a sheet, and burned to death. On that day, I became the eighth Brazilian trans woman killed this year. I am Tiffany Gooden a 19-year-old from Chicago, Illinois. I was found dead on August 14, 2012 in an abandoned building in the South Austin neighborhood, just three blocks away from where another trans woman of color was found dead in April. I am Coco Williams, and I am 35 years old. On April 4, 2012 in Detroit, Michigan, I was shot and killed. My name is Cecil Ann from Antioch, Hello, Turkey. On July 10th, 2012, I was found dead at my home by police after my friends alerted them when they couldn't reach me. My throat had been slit and my face slashed. 
I am an unknown trans woman from Hope, Paraiba, Brazil. On May 10th, 2012, I was taken to a pond, shot, and left to die. My name is Thapelo Makutle. I am 23, a South African trans beauty pageant winner, and I worked as a volunteer for LEGBL Northern Cape, a local gay advocacy group. On June 9th, 2012, I was found dead, my throat cut, partially decapitated, and my genitals stuffed in my mouth. My name is David de Oliveira Condado. I am a 16-year-old from Londrina, Paraná, Brazil. On March 22, 2012, I was thrown in a vacant lot behind a shopping center with signs of violence on my head and neck. I am Chiquina from, San, from Bandeirantes, São Paulo, Brazil. I was found dead in the back seat of my car on March 13, 2012. The police believe my death was caused by sticks and stones. I was 35 years old. My name is Carla, a 51-year-old trans woman from Campo Rana Rana, Brazil. On March 2nd, 2012, two people reported several shots from a firearm against a citizen. My lifeless body was found by police lying in a highway with the gunshot wounds to the head. My name is Larissa Severia, and I am from Piracaba, Sao Paulo, Brazil. On August 17th, 2012, I was found dead with multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and face and dumped by the side of the road. I am Tracy Johnson. On July 5th, 2012, in Baltimore, Maryland, I was found murdered in my apartment in the Reservoir Hill neighborhood. This was not a random incident. I was targeted by someone I knew. My name is Agnes Torres Solka. A writer and activist for LGBT rights in Alexco, Pueblo, Mexico. On March 10, 2012, I was found in a ditch with my neck slashed and burn marks on my body, indicating that I had been tortured. I am an unknown trans woman from Manas, Amazonas, Brazil. On January 17, 2012, my body was found in a forest area adjacent to the campus of the Federal University of Amazonas with signs of stragglization. My friends know me as Diani Jones. I am a 23-year-old from Baltimore, Maryland. On February 2nd, 2012, I was found suffering from a fatal stab wound at a bus stop in Northeast Washington in the evening and died in the hospital the next morning. I am an unknown trans woman from San Jose de Rio Preto, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I am 30 years old. A motorcyclist shot four trans women in four different locations on August 15, 2012. I was shot and killed near my car on a dirt road. My name is Paloa Cristiano. I'm a 28-year-old from Maceo, Alagos, Brazil. I had been surviving as a sex worker when on January 30th, 2012, I was shot seven times in the head, shoulders, and back by a client. take a moment uh, to remember those who died 
uh, at the hands of discrimination and oppression and through their own means. I don't do a lot of like metaphorical talking, but um, Rachel and I got in the car the other day and she said, I love the rain. Not everybody loves the rain, but I love the rain when the rain comes. And I thought, I think a lot of us feel like we love the rain. It's a newness, a regeneration, a time to live ourselves out loud and authentic, as Robin said. And we often feel like that when we embark on our transition. We feel like, you know, when we go out in the rain, you gotta put your scarf on and your boots on and your heavy coat, but it's okay because when we get outside, we're in the rain and the rain falls around us and we love that feeling of that authentic and fresh newness. So much like a trans woman may get up 45 minutes before she needs to in order to remove that facial hair that she just doesn't want. A trans man may have to make sure that he always does his whites first because your binders are white and they gotta be clean all the time. And you put on your extra gear so that you can go out and face the rain, so that you can be out there and live your life out loud. And sometimes, right, in February, March when we get those strange rains and we're not sure why it's still raining just like we didn't know why it was 80 degrees last week. <laughs> it's still raining and we're still getting up early, 45 minutes early to present ourselves to the world over and over again and we get tired with that. We get tired with having to wake up every day and do that. And we think maybe we don't want it to rain anymore. Maybe we don't wanna have to do this anymore. Maybe living authentically isn't gonna work for us. Maybe as Thanksgiving comes next week and it's one more time when we can't go home or when if we do go home, we have to pretend that we're not somebody that, that as we stand there in our authentic selves, our family still looks us in the eyes and calls us by a different name. And maybe we don't wanna go out in the rain anymore. And so then maybe, maybe it would be better if we just weren't here at all. If we didn't have to cause that kind of pain to our family, to our coworkers, Maybe we shouldn't have to do this any longer. And it is often that trans folks facing the incredible disparities in unemployment and economic empowerment who think maybe I'll never be able to get a job again. Maybe there's really not anybody out there who will love me or love my body or love who I am. And so maybe I should save everybody the trouble and just leave and just be gone. And the numbers of those individuals who take that route, who were murdered by discrimination and oppression in society, far outnumber the candles that we have here on the table, which represent probably one in 10 of the murders of transgender people throughout just this year. Those numbers of those folks who choose suicide over authenticity are high, and we've had them in our community the faces of them are on the easels around us today. People we've loved. People my counselors at the Gender Health Center have had as clients. These, some of these people have had everything available to them that we possibly could to make this journey easier. And yet the end result for them was to end their life through their own hands. And so as we gather in this room today completely full and we light these candles, just remember I guarantee you, someone sitting in your row has attempted, contemplated suicide over and over again and may still do so tomorrow and the next day. And you're needed. You're needed to reach out your hand and say, exist in this world no matter what. I am here for you to create a world that you can be in. However you come, whenever you come, every day you can live this way. However you wake up and decide to be in the world, I will fight for you, I will stand there, and I will be there for you. I don't want another suicide in our community here in Sacramento or anywhere. So please remember those whose lives have lost through suicide and remember that you are a part of this solution. <laughs>